So coming together, two couples, swapping, changing partners, having an intimate, playful time with two couples. That's what we're going to talk about today and talk about how you can make this the best experience ever. I want to talk about this uh, because I've been working with some people lately, some couples who have been diving into this territory. Very excited about doing couple to couple kind of swapping and interchanging. And one couple had the worst experience they could have ever imagined. <laughs> so <laughs> we had to sort of break it down piece by piece and this is what I'm going to do in the video today so that you can have a great experience. You can go into it and have a lot of fun and feel really good after. The first thing is when you meet another couple that you're thinking, yeah, we could maybe play with this couple or maybe you meet them online and something kind of clicks and you think, yeah, this is a possibility. We both like them. Um, meet them first for real in a no play situation. So coffee or a drink or dinner or whatever, but meet with no expectation. You want to have an opportunity that you can, so you can talk to each other, so that you can talk about sex. This is a great um, step in for you and your partner so that you can start practicing talking about sex. It helps you get to know the other couple really well, find out what they like, what they don't like, what they have done, what they would like to do, um, and get to know each other a little bit to see if this is actually really the couple that you want to get super intimate with. One of the most important things that I really believe about having these encounters with other people in non-monogamous situations is practicing talking about sex. You know, yes, during sex, maybe you're not talking that much, but it's really important to start to learn to talk about sex. And it's great to talk about sex with absolute strangers because they're not going to tell anybody anything about your life and you're not going to tell them about your, their lives. You're just sitting down. You know why you are there. You are all interested in the possibility of playing. So you're going to sit down and have a conversation about sex. Now this um, not only helps you learn about them, but it helps you learn about yourself. They may ask you some questions that no one has ever asked you before. And you'll have to think about that because you're going to have to answer something. You're going to have to start being comfortable, comfortable talking about sex. I know for me, the first number of times that I would meet with people to talk about sex, couples, other couples, I was quite nervous. You know, I, yes, I talked to my partner about sex, but talking to complete strangers, it is a little bit scary and it's a little bit exciting too because, you know, you're going to go out your, go beyond the, the regular sort of confined area that you are and you're going to start revealing things to these people. On top of that, you want to be really, really curious about them, about what they do, why they do it, when they do it, who they did it with. Like really go into being curious and asking questions. This is how you really learn about sex. This is how you learn about what you might or might not want to try or what the possibilities are. Or if you're talking to another couple that's actually had a lot of experience and you haven't, it's very interesting to hear the kinds of experiences people are having and how it felt and what they did. And so be really curious in the conversation. Now having the expectation of no sex during this no play date is really important because if you don't want to have sex with them, you can get out of it. And if you do want to have sex with them, you'll just plan to do it another time. Or if you're all four of you are really into each other and you love the, the energy and the atmosphere, you might decide to go off and have sex right away. Go get a hotel room and get going. But if you are not sure, you don't know what your partner's feeling, just end the meeting really nicely and say, we'll be in touch. As soon as you leave, have a chat with your partner. What do you think? make a decision and text them back right away. I find like it's just easier to get it done. You don't have to think about it too much or worry about it. It could be a simple text of, yes, we really liked you and we'd love to get together sometime. That was awesome. Or we don't really think this is a good match. Boom. That's it. You don't really need to, you don't need to give reasons or excuses. Just be on the table, be upfront. It really saves you a lot of time and, and energy. So now let's say that you both, you and your partner really like this couple and you're, you're both saying, yes, we want to play with this couple. So the next step is going to make a play date. 
And this can be sometimes tricky because you have four people that have to all be on the same page, all be available, <laughs> and all be ready to open up and play. So you take your time, get the right date, get the right time, not just for them, but for you as well, so that you're all in a good place, um, you can get things organized just perfectly, and you can come together and really enjoy yourselves. Now you've met the couple once already, so before you go and meet them at the play date, sit down, you and your partner, and have a conversation. Have a, con have a deep conversation <laughs> about Okay, what are our boundaries here? What do you want to do? What are you thinking you want to do? What are you thinking you do not want to do? How far do we want to go here? Let's make our boundaries together. Let's decide together so we're both on the exactly the same page. <laughs> now, I've heard this uh, mistake happen so many times when people don't talk about it with their partners. They don't know kind of what their partner really wants or doesn't want. Uh, they get there. They then don't talk to the other couple, you know, and it just starts to unfold in a mess. So you want to start with you and your partner having a really good conversation and making some firm decisions about what you're going to do or not do. This doesn't mean that it, it's going, it, it, it doesn't, can't be flexible, right? Because that's going to be another step is being able to talk about changes that you might want to make, but just decide on something so that you both feel like you're in a safe space so that you you can you know where each of you stands right so have that really good conversation with each other this is a pretty obvious one but i'm going to say it anyways because i have met up with couples who <laughs> you know one shows up in a pair of sweatpants and they're just not wearing anything you know they just don't look that great and it turns me off right away so you're going on a date dress up look good have fun with what you're going to wear, look good, feel good, get yourself ready, get yourself beautified and, and smelling good and looking good. As soon as you arrive at whatever destination it is with the, and the four of you are together in the privacy of a room, a hotel room, their house, your house, whatever, have another conversation. Have it right off the bat before you have any kind of drinks or you get started or any clothes come off. Have a conversation. Now, the conversation is going to be about sex and about the boundaries. You want to know what kind of things that they're thinking they'd like to do. What are the kind of things they don't want to do? What, um, what, are, what are they thinking is the kind of play that they want to have happen? They're going to tell you theirs. You're going to tell, you, you're going to tell them yours. And you're going to come up with a little bit of a boundary for the evening of, for all four of you. Now, this is... Um, it seems a little bit strange, and I know uh, with some of the people that I've been working with, they just do not do this, but they find that it gets really messy later on. And I know from personal experience, not doing that, it has got it has become an extremely messy situation because we just don't know where everybody, what everybody wants, and boundaries get crossed, people get uncomfortable. Um, so it's just better to create the boundaries right away in the beginning. And what do I mean by that? It means that, let's say you and your partner decided that you're going to do some. you would like to do swapping. You don't want any of you to leave the room. You want to be in the same room at close proximity with each other. Uh, you maybe don't want um, penetration or anal or you don't want to do certain things. And then you hear from the other couple that certain kind of things that they want or don't want. Talk about who is potentially interested in this by who's bi-curious, who's bisexual, or who wants to have some crossovers with the same sex. How are you comfortable with that? Have these kinds of conversations. Really find it out. Because once you get into that sexual energy and everything starts to roll and move, it's, it's harder to stop and then start talking about boundaries. Right? You're already in it. You're already, get, you're already going and it sort of really breaks it all up. So have it right in the beginning. I want to offer you this in a PDF as well. I put 12 steps on a PDF for you so that you can read through it and check off what you, what you need to do. If you'd like to get that, the first link in the description below. And you can get that. I will send it to you right away. Okay? Now you start to play. You start to come together and you know the boundaries. You know where everybody kind of fits in and what everybody wants and doesn't want. And you start to play and you start to have fun. Be very vocal, okay? Allow yourself to talk a lot about how you're feeling, uh, about what you like, what you, what, what's working for you, what feels good. 
uh, vocal to your partner. How are you doing, honey? How are things going? How are you feeling? Checking in with your partner, making sure that they're okay. Uh, checking in with the other people. Uh, expressing how you feel. Oh, I feel really good. This feels amazing. Oh, maybe at one point, I don't feel very comfortable right now. I'm feeling kind of jealous. I'm feeling kind of, it's kind of feeling a bit strange for me. I think we should, could just stop for a second. That's okay. All of that conversation, all of that talk is absolutely okay. Each of you needs to have your own sense of control here. And if, if you want to stop at any time, then do it. It's okay. No one should judge you for that. It, this, is a, this is a very intimate scenario coming together like this. So there will be times that maybe you've, you had a trigger where you just feel like, oh my God, I feel so uncomfortable. I don't like this or I don't, whatever I'm seeing, I don't like. Stop it. Say, hey, I need to stop for a second, please, honey. Can we go have a little conversation? Or I need to talk to everybody for a second. Be vocal. It really saves a scenario. And I don't mean just, again, in um, when you want to stop something you're uncomfortable. But like, wow, this is amazing. I'm having such a great time. Oh, you're incredible. Hey, babe, how are things going? How are you doing? Are you loving it? Yeah, I'm loving it too. Like, really enjoy yourself and be vocal and playful. Keep in contact with your partner as much as you possibly can, okay? Now, you can get swept away if you're swapping and suddenly your partner's over there with that person and you're with the other person and you're really, things are really going and it's really exciting. Try to remember to, to check in with your partner, okay? Even if it's just saying, hey, hon, how you doing? Or whatever, her, whatever your partner's saying, hey, Liana, how's it going? Liana! Or just the name. Just connect in. I suggest sometimes to have like a, a safe words that for each of you to, to use. You could use red, yellow, and green. So green is like green. It's all going great. Yellow, you know, like I'm something's a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe we have to slow down. And red could mean I need to stop right now. You have to feel like you are with your just your partner, even though there's two other people. You have to be able to, you have to feel really secure and be able to feel that you are in control and whatever you decide to do, whatever decision you decide to make is okay. Everyone's going to support you, okay? So don't sit in um, angst or fear or even just sitting in, in, in all the pleasure and you don't really have any clue with what your partner's doing. Maybe they're going through some struggles. Check on each other. Keep in contact. Also, while you're playing and things are really going well, maybe it gets a little bit too much for you. It gets a little overwhelming. Don't uh, worry about asking for a break or just slowing down. Say, yeah, let's, all ha let's slow down. Let's go get a drink. It's okay. You have to think about <laughs> this sexual connect connection kind of like a wave. It's going to go up and down and up and down. You know, if you want to kind of um, play it out for a couple of hours with this couple, uh, you're, you, things are going to happen. You know, maybe he's going to lose his erection and then she's not going to be into it and, and maybe you need to change things up or the excitement has happened and then it comes back down again. And so just take little breaks when you need to and voice when you need to. There might, they might be really hot and heavy, the other couple, your partner and the other person, and you're kind of both finished here. You can say, hey, we're, we're done. We're going to go get a drink if you don't mind them continuing. Or maybe we can just stop here for a second because uh, I need to take a little break. That's okay. You know, you need to know that um, slowing down is okay because it helps. When you slow down, it helps then for the energy to start to build up again in a different way that's going to be even better for all of you. And lastly, while you are in this mode of playing, really play, be play, be playful, have fun. This is the adult playground. You want to enjoy this as much as possible. You want to make it feel like, you know, this is, this is the fun part of what you and your partner go out and do and then what you express and how you um, enjoy the evening together. So be playful, be, you know, laugh and, and um, joke around and, and have a good time. Like really, really have a good time. If the other, the other couple is just like more serious and, you know, they're hard to sort of get into this playful mood, you and your partner can have fun still. It doesn't really matter. And if it's really not working out at all, nothing like you had expected, then just excuse yourself and say, well, I think we, we, we want to get going now. You know, thank you very much for your time. Always be friendly and positive. And if you need to leave, 
that's absolutely fine as well. It's totally up to the two of you. If it's not working for you, then just step aside and say, I think we're going to take a break or I think it's time for us to leave now. Thank you for your time. Uh, we really, this was really interesting <laughs> because you're not always going to have like these mind blowing experiences with another couple. You will have those, of course, but it takes time to meet that kind of couple and to really have these beautiful connections. You have four people here that have to all connect and get along and everything, right? So there will be some situations that are not, not going to go as great as you had hoped. So just remember all of these tips that I've told you so that you can create the best experience possible. With these tips in mind, it can be better <laughs> than you had ever expected. So if this is something that you're exploring with your partner and you want to go into this swapping, the wife swapping, the, the husband swapping, the couple, the, the same room sexual activity, then again, go to the first link in the description below and I will send you these 12 steps that you can go through so that you can remember uh, what it is that you can do in order to create an incredible experience together. I hope this really helps you out. Um, this is part of sexually exploring in a relationship and it can be a lot of fun and it can really expand you as sexual beings as well. You're going to learn a lot about yourself and about your partner. So be easy on yourself, be gentle on yourself, laugh at the things that would normally seem like quite, oh my God, that happened. Like just laugh at it later and don't put all the power into one experience. If one experience doesn't go that well, eh, go have another one, right? Learn from it. Talk about it later. Learn from what worked, what didn't work. What would you like more of in this scenario? How could you help each other more? And then go meet another couple and have a great time. Okay? So thank you for coming and I will see you again very soon next time. Much love making.